welcome to Historic Eats, where we recreate recipes from the past and share a little bit about the history of the dish itself or some of its key ingredients. And today we will be making German soft pretzels and German beer cheese, also known as Obatzva, which is just really fun to say. The German soft pretzels history goes back, way back, like to 600 AD, and it has some really interesting origin stories that we'll share a little bit more with you later. But one of them even includes the possibility that the soft pretzel was invented by an Italian monk. But make no mistake, it's definitely the Germans that have laid hold of this recipe, perfected it, and made it the iconic snack food that it is today. Well, in keeping with the tradition of historic eats, we want to make the recipe as authentically as we can from the original as possible. So we will be dunking the pretzel dough into a lye bath. Now, lye is a chemical that is caustic, so we have to use some precautions while using it. However, I'm confident as long as you follow the safety tips, you will be just fine. They've been using lye in bakeries for hundreds of years. It's what gives the surface of the dough that shiny finish and allows it to get brown and crunchy on the outside and chewy on the inside. They use it when they make bagels and they also use it in hard roll making as well. So it can definitely be safely handled. And alternately, I will also share a method that even your children can help you with where we will just dunk the pretzel dough into a baking soda water solution. And that's completely safe for anyone to be around. So without further ado, let's get started. To begin, we'll start with a half a cup of warm water. To that, add a tablespoon of brown sugar one tablespoon of yeast, and just stir that to dissolve and set aside. In a large mixing bowl, we'll combine our dry ingredients. We'll begin with four cups of all-purpose flour. To that, add one teaspoon of salt, One and a half teaspoons of dry malt powder. This is just for flavoring and it's optional, so you can leave it out. It'll still taste great. And two tablespoons of butter. Our yeast mixture has been working for five minutes and you can see it's foamed up really well. We'll go ahead and add that to the dry ingredient and get it going with the mixer. Okay, hey, this has been mixing for eight minutes. I added an additional three quarter cup of warm water. If you don't use the mixer, you definitely could knead it by hand for the total eight minutes. Okay, I've got our dough out of the mixing bowl. It's really smooth and I'm gonna go ahead and just divide it roughly into eight sections and then we will let it rest for an additional 30 minutes. And pretzel dough, you're not really concerned about it rising very much, but you do have to give it a break when you first mix it so that the gluten can settle down because when you're rolling it out into ropes, you want it to um, continue to stretch. And if you roll it out right now, it would just shrink back really fast. So I'm just gonna make eight balls and put them right over here on a greased pan and I will cover it with plastic wrap so that the dough stays nice and moist. And in 30 minutes, we can start rolling them out into ropes. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. So it's time to roll out our pretzel balls into ropes. We'll begin just by kind of pressing and deflating them a little bit. And then we just start rolling them. And my mat is about 28 inches long. So we just want to roll them to, they're to the edges of the mat. And it's stretching really nicely because we gave it that little break. In the thick places, you just apply a little more pressure and even it out as you go. And once you have the desired length, you make it into a pretzel shape. And all you simply do is just cross it over itself and then put one extra twist in it. And that's it. And then we're going to move them over to a rack because they'll have to go into the freezer for 30 minutes. That's just going to help them keep their shape 
before we put them in the uh, liquid bath. Well, these are all rolled out and I'm going to pop them in the freezer for 30 minutes. That'll just help them keep their shape before we dunk them. These are the safety instructions for using sodium hydroxide, also known as a lye solution. Number one, wear gloves and avoid contact with your skin. If you do get any of the lye solution on your skin, be sure to wash it right away with mild soap and plenty of water. Keep children and pets free from the area to prevent spills. Number two, make sure you have good ventilation. While the lye is dissolving in the water, it will give off a gas. This gas is odorless, but it can irritate your airways. So it's good to stir it on the porch or even in the garage with the garage door open. Number three, choose a glass or a plastic container to mix the solution. Do not mix it in a metal container as the mixture will warm up and it's possible the metal will become too hot. Number four, add the lye to the water in that order. Simply sprinkle the lye across the surface of the water and stir it until it dissolves. Do not put the lye in the bowl first and pour the water on top of it as it could cause it to foam and spill over. And finally, number five, neutralize the lye solution before disposing. Simply mix one part white vinegar to two parts lye solution. In this recipe, you will need two cups of white vinegar to neutralize the four cups of lye solution we will be using. Okay, so we're outside on the patio. I took our pretzels out of the freezer and we're ready to make our lye bath. I got a couple things out here to be ready to go. We need one quart of water. So I'm gonna pour that in my plastic container. And then here's our sodium hydroxide. I'm gonna put my gloves on before I go any further. I do have plastic utensils, but stainless steel really should be fine. And then my baking sheet, I just put wax paper on it and then a cooling rack on top of it. It's just to kind of let the lye water drain off. Okay, so this is the part where you gotta kind of be careful. This is when you add the lye to the water. And so, you just don't want to breathe any of it in, so you're going to sprinkle it. On. I'm going to sprinkle it on, stir it, and just step away for a minute. So I need two tablespoons, and just sprinkling it on the top. I'm just going to gently stir it. Okay, and I'm just gonna walk away and give it about one minute. Okay, and it's almost completely clear. It started out kind of cloudy. I'm just gonna stir it one more time just to make sure everything is fully dissolved. And again, I'm just gonna step away and wait one more minute and we should be ready to go. All right, so the solution is completely clear. I'm just gonna leave it undisturbed. It's not outgassing at all anymore. So you don't even have to worry about fumes. Once it's done dissolving, it's done. So I'm just gonna take my pretzel and it's so warm out here, it's already like not even frozen anymore. And just dip it in and we're gonna wait 15 seconds. Now it's fully submerged, so there's no reason to flip it over or anything. It's getting lie on it everywhere. And I got my tongs and my rack is ready. And so the lye is having a chemical reaction with the proteins in the surface of the wheat and it I don't exactly understand all of the chemistry words for it, but it actually makes almost like a soap film on it. And that is what turns it shiny and causes it to get nice and brown. So this has been about 15 seconds. Use a couple utensils here and get it out. And then I'm just gonna set it right on my rack. 
and we can reshape it before we bake it. And we're just going to let it drain. I'll put the next one in. There's nothing to it. So you can see that this is something that you can easily manage to do safely as long as you have a nice ventilated area and you have protection. Now, as I was telling you before, it is important that we neutralize the lye water before we dispose of it, and that's what the vinegar is for. So now I'm going to just neutralize my mixture. Like I said, I need half the volume. And I've already pre-measured this out, so but that's it. Now it's completely neutralized, and I can literally go pour this down my sink drain. And I'll just follow it up with a bunch of water, and it's, it's done, and we're done with the lye. So it was really easy. All right, we'll go inside and go on to the baking soda mixture. I'm back. I took the second set of pretzels out of the freezer, and I have our water boiling with the baking soda. So this is five cups of water with one-third cup of baking soda, and then I just have another drip rack right beside it. Now these will have to process for a minute, so they process a little bit longer than the lye bath. I'm going to do two at a time because I think my pan is big enough and the uh, baking soda is going to have a similar effect um, of, of creating some sort of a smooth coating and it will also help them brown. And So I took these off of the rack where they were drippings and moved them onto a very well greased cookie sheet. Now we just have to sprinkle them with pretzel salt. And I love to use pretzel salt because it just gives it just the right texture. And this brand I got, of course, on Amazon. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. These are going to go straight in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes. So now on to prepare our German beer cheese. We will be making Obatzba, which is a traditional Bavarian cheese spread. And it was originally created by an innkeeper in Bavaria in the 1920s. And it became so popular that it's the widely accepted German beer cheese of the day. Uh, the ingredients we're just going to mix by hand. It's supposed to just kind of have an organic texture to it. And it's typically served with soft pretzels, of course, crackers, and even some salted meats. So kind of think German charcuterie board. Okay, so our ingredients are three tablespoons of butter, eight ounces cream cheese, eight ounces of camembert cheese. If you can't find camembert cheese, you can use brie, but it's usually over like where the specialty cheeses are in the grocery store. And then we have two tablespoons of chives and we will have um, half a cup of chopped onion. We'll be using one half teaspoon paprika and a half teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to start combining all my soft ingredients just with a fork. So this is the butter, the camembert, and the uh, cream cheese. So I'm going to sprinkle in my chives. I'm going to leave a few out just for some garnish. one and a half teaspoons of paprika and again we'll probably even garnish with a little bit of paprika as well and I need a half a teaspoon of salt I'm going to chop up the onion last And I chopped up my onions. Just give those a final mix in. The paprika gives it really pretty color. So now that I have everything reasonably incorporated, it's time to add our beer. So I'm using a German lager. This is Hofbrauhaus's Oktoberfest, and we'll need four tablespoons of that. The 
the beginnings of the soft pretzel are nothing short of historic. Back in the 7th century, the Catholic Church's observance of Lent is what brought about the first pretzel. In 610, monks in northern Italy invented pretzels as a Lent-friendly snack, as it was free of dairy, meat, and eggs. The monks shared them with the poor and gave them as rewards to their pupils for memorizing their prayers. Pretzels were originally called pretiolas, meaning little rewards, or bracciale, meaning little arms, as they looked like little arms crossed in prayer. During the Middle Ages, pretzels spread throughout the rest of Europe as not only a Lenten food, but a popular snack. Germany led the way in the commercialization of pretzels, and pretzel bakeries became popular. As early as the 1400s, pretzels were even being sold on food carts in the cities. In the early 1500s, again it was the monks baking pretzels that gave pretzels another big score in history. Late in the night during the year 1529, monks in Vienna, Austria, baking pretzels in the basement of the monastery, heard strange sounds. In fact, sounds of the Ottoman Turks digging tunnels under the city's walls. The monks alerted the authorities and the Turkish attack was thwarted and the city was saved. As a reward, the Austrian emperor gave the pretzel bakers their own coat of arms, two fierce lions holding a pretzel. The pretzel coat of arms then became the emblem of pretzel bakeries, and they soon served as billboards for locating the bakery in the city. Germans brought the pretzel with them when they came to America in the 1700s. Many of the German immigrants settled in Pennsylvania and became the Pennsylvania Dutch. One of these immigrants, pretzel maker Julius Sturges, began looking for a way to preserve the pretzel during transportation and extend its shelf life. As a result, in 1861, he invented the first hard pretzel. His bakery in Lilitz, Pennsylvania is credited as the first commercial bakery of the hard pretzel. Today, 80% of the world's pretzels are still made in Pennsylvania. Through time, pretzels have not only been a tasty snack, but they've been attached to symbolism and significance. With the pretzels' beginnings in the church, they were originally symbolic of the Holy Trinity, Lent, and Easter. In fact, German parents would hide pretzels Easter morning for their children to find, like an Easter egg hunt. Later on, pretzels came to represent love, as royal Swedish couples would make a wish and break a pretzel during their wedding ceremonies. On New Year's, German children would wear pretzel necklaces to symbolize new beginnings. In many cultures, they've been symbols of faith, good luck, and prosperity. The pretzel's popularity has certainly stood the test of time, as it is today one of the world's most popular and historically delicious snacks. Now on to enjoy the German soft pretzel. All done, fresh out of the oven. These here on the left were those that were dunked in the lye bath. You can see they're shiny. There's little blisters on the surface of them, just beautiful. And these over here were in the baking soda bath, and you see they just puffed up more. They're beautiful and tender, and they have some surface cracks in them. And we warmed up some of our obatsva cheese to give it a try, and it smells like a beautiful German bakery in here. Well, now for the difficult job of tasting these. Oh, and the cheese sauce, the onion, and the chives, they're absolutely delicious. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, Avina Zen.